Hi guys! Welcome to Team Jazz Channel! And this is now the part 2 ng aming vlog kung saan ikunento namin yung aming visa application process para makarating kami dito sa Canada as a dependent of a foreign skilled worker. So we hope na napanood na ninyo yung aming part 1 kung saan pinag-usapan natin kung ano nga ba yung naging application timeline namin. Mga documents na uh, prinesent ko as an OWP. Pinag-usapan din natin kung ano yung upfront medical and kung paano kayo makakapagpa-schedule ng appointment sa St. Luke's. Creation of your GCK account at syempre kung anong itsura niyan kapag ka nag-initiate na kayo ng inyong um, application. So for today's vlog, ang pag-uusapan naman natin are some of the grounds for refusal na na laman ko while I'm uh, reading some of the feedback or some of the uh, stories ng mga naging applicants then for their visa applications. And then, uh, we will also discuss yung mga documents na sinabmit ko naman para dun sa aking dalawang uh, anak, isang student at saka for RAM which is a temporary residence visa. Pag-uusapan natin yung biometrics, paanong ginagawa dyan, pagpasa ng inyong uh, passport for visa stamping, and of course, yung pagre-request ng travel authorization. So, uh, sana may matutunan kayo dito sa video na ito. So, let's get to the video! Now, kanina na-mention ko na may mga nababasa ko na reasons for refusal na sineshare ng ibang naging applicants and iniisipan ko sila ng documents na pwede kong uh, ipantapat doon. So, number one dyan is yung home ties. Mahina yung home ties namin kasi number one, uh, wala kaming property sa Pilipinas under our name. Meron kaming bahay sa Pinas pero hindi pa kasi siya nalilipat sa pangalan ng husband ko. Number two, dalawa sa mga kapatid ko are uh, already permanent residents and citizens dito sa Canada and the IRCC might see it as an opportunity na mag-TNT kayo dito dahil meron kayong kamag-anak. And then number three, isasama namin yung dalawang anak namin. If maiiwan kasi yung dalawang bata sa Pilipinas, Malaki yung uh, dahilan para bumalik kayo ng Pilipinas dahil nandun yung mga anak ninyo. Pero sa case kasi namin, isasama namin yung dalawang bata, which means wala ng immediate family na pwede naming balikan sa Pilipinas. So, yun yung mga uh, reasons kung bakit mahina yung home ties namin. Bali, yung mga documents na sinamit ko as proof of funds are also the documents that can make our home ties stronger. Aside from that, I also requested uh, for an offer of employment from my previous manager uh, para ipakita kay immigration officer na hindi ako uh, magwo-worry na bumalik sa Pilipinas because may trabaho na nag sa akin doon pagbalik ko. Another reason of refusal na naaalala ko is yung Employment opportunity ng OWP dito sa Canada is not as high because of his or her uh, work experiences in the past or in his or her home country. So, para patunayan na I have the skills and the knowledge uh, para maging essential uh, contributor sa economic ng Canada, I also requested for a reference letter kung saan nakasaad in detail kung ano yung aking mga job responsibilities. And that is also the reason why I submitted certificate of trainings and recognitions para ipakita na, you know, you have what it takes para makakuha ng employment uh, pagdating mo dito. Next, an another reason for refusal na nabasa ko would be yung... Um, Proof of relationship sa temporary foreign worker. Now, even even though we are married, yung marriage certificate only shows that you are legally married, pero hindi siya uh, documents that show 
that the relationship is genuine. So, dahil doon, kailangan, uh, kailangan ko mag-provide ng travel history, like yung mga uh, plane tickets namin, either travel as a family or travel namin ni Daddy Oyo as a couple, at saka yung mga hotel bookings, mga accommodations na pinag, uh, mga pinagbubuk namin way, way back. Lahat yun, uh, ipin- ipinesent ko. Before, or yung iba, nagsasend din ng um, mga pictures. Pero yung sa akin, hindi na ako nag-submit uh, ng mga pictures namin together. Uh, ang sinubmit ko lang sa aking letter of intent is our YouTube channel. Yun yung i-prenovide ko doon sa letter of intent namin. Because doon sa YouTube channel namin, makikita naman nila kung paano kami, or ge- na-genuine yung relationship namin as a family. So, yan. Ito yung mga documents na sinabit ko as an open work permit. Again, it it's um, it's good that you learn from other people's experiences because another reason kung bakit uh, nag-submit ako ng madaming documents is because when you applied and you got refused, forever na nasa record mo yung refusal na yan. And Pag nag-apply ka or nag apply ka ng application mo, you have to declare na yung previous applications mo was denied. Kailangan mong ibigay yung reason. And ayokong, as much as I can, ayokong magkaroon sa record namin na na-refuse kami for a visa application. That's why it's okay kahit tumagal ang pag uh, pag-process ninyo ng application or pag-initiate uh, ninyo ng application as long as in your heart, alam ninyo na when you click that submit button, wala na kayong, wala nang ibang documents pa na pwedeng hanapin ng IRCC uh, that can make them change their mind. So, yun yung nasa isip ko. Kailangan pag inopen ng, ng, uh, na, uh, inopen ng immigration yung aming application, lahat ng documents, lahat ng tanong niya, masasagot ng mga documents na uh, prenesent ko. So, yun. Nasa sa inyo na ngayon yan, whether or not, ano yung mga documents na isasubmit ninyo. Okay? Gaya nga nasabi ko, yung IMM forms na kailangan ninyong uh, i-fill out uh, can change depending on what type of applications you are doing. So, for those who are applying for a work permit, uh, meron actually guide na makikita ninyo sa IRCC website. So, andito siya lahat from uh, gathering the documents, uh, how to fill out certain forms, magkano yung applications, how to submit your applications, and then kung ano yung mangyayari right after you submit. So, kompleto itong guide na to. Actually, this uh, guide is really helpful because merong mga forms na medyo confusing kung paano mo siya sasagutan. So, ilalagay ko rin yung link na to uh, dito sa info box below para meron kayong reference uh, while you're doing uh, or while you're answering the forms i suggest that you go through this um, as well para hindi kayo malito okay tingnan naman natin yung mga documents na submit ko for Ate Arts study permit application now do note that even if nagpasa kayo ng application as a family yung inyong application yung inyong visa application will still be treated separately so kailangan complete pa rin yung mga documents na isasubmit ninyo per application okay so for the IMM forms meron lang dalawang form uh, na kailangan mong i-submit for uh, uh, the study permit for personal documents, again, gumawa ako ng letter of intent. Yung CAQ decision letter, passport, digital photo, and then proof of upfront medical exam. Now, for uh, minor uh, na mga student, sa application process, hindi nila kailangan mag-present ng letter of acceptance from uh, the Canadian school. We, uh, pwedeng dito na kayo maghanap ng school na papasukan ng bata. Pero sa end namin, naghanap kami ng school, uh, nasa Pilipinas pa lang kami. So, meron na akong LOA ni Art, pero nung nag-submit kami or nag-apply uh, kami ng study permit niya, wala pa kaming LOA. And then again, you have to present yung proof of relationship sa temporary foreign worker. 
So, kay Art, nag-submit namin ng birth certificate, marriage certificate namin, and then yung baptismal certificate niya, uh, which has our name as um, as her parents. And then, same yung present namin na documents for proof of funds or home ties. And same din yung mga documents na present namin uh, na documents ng temporary foreign worker. For RAM naman, ito yung mga documents na sinabmit namin. Ito yung mga IMM forms. Sa personal documents, we submitted digital photo, passport, at saka yung upfront medical exam. Yung proof of relationship, again, birth certificate, marriage certificate, and yung kanyang baptismal certificate. Same pa rin yung documents na sinabmit ko for proof of funds and documents of foreign worker. Now, let's talk about my tip number four, which is for you to write a powerful letter of intent. Now, if you noticed, with the exemptions of RAM's application, I submitted a letter of intent for my visa application as well as yung kay Ate Art. And hindi naman ito katulad ng mga LOI ng mga international students that are highly technical. LOI for family reunifications are more uh, chill, more laid back. Uh, kailangan lang, kumbaga ang atake mo dito is yung emotion. Kailangan pag nagbasa si immigration officer, ma iparating mo sa kanya that it's much better for your family, especially for the children, uh, that your family are together dito sa Canada. So, yung format na ginawa ko for my LOI, um, so first yung greetings and yung reason for the letter and yung brief background about myself, mga work experiences ko, and I also mentioned yung uh, very brief background namin ni daddy, saan kami nagkakilala, kailan kami kinasal. I also established the kind of the relationship that my husband has for our children. Um, gano ka importante yung uh, guidance na maibibigay ng husband ko sa mga anak namin. Uh, what else yung... Uh, yung how important it is that the children have, have uh, both of their parents with them as they grow up para hindi maapektuhan yung kanilang um, emotional and developmental growth, mga ganyan. And then I also uh, mentioned that it is my intention to work uh, pagka nakarating ako dito to contribute to the family financially. And yun, yung mga ganun bang... Um, Type. Uh, Canada is very uh, family-oriented country, para rin yung uh, Philippines, and they put such high value uh, to family being together. So, you just have to explain to them uh, na solid yung family ninyo, and it's, it will be better uh, if you guys uh, stay together. So, yan yung aking tip number four. Next naman is to do the biometrics. Ano nga ba yung biometrics? So, ito yung kukunan ka ng photo and yung uh, fingerprints. And this will allow the visa officers to determine kung yung applicant is merong criminal, uh, criminal record. So, sino yung dapat na magbigay ng uh, biometrics? So, if you're applying for a visitor's, uh, visitor's visa, work or study permit, uh, kung mag-PPR ka, uh, refugee, uh, extend, mag-request ka for an extension of your stay, uh, at saka yung mag-request ka ng extension for a work or study uh, permit, kailangan mag-provide ka ng uh, biometrics. And yung biometrics, ang validity na niyan is uh, for 10 years. Now, paano ka makakapagpa-schedule ng biometrics? So, you have to first pay uh, the biometric fee. Actually, upon uh, submission of your application, merong next na page doon kung saan ire-require na kayo na mag-process ng online application and kasama na siya doon sa fee na kailangan ninyong bayaran. So, biometric fee is $85. And then, uh, you have to get the biometric instruction letter. Uh, hindi ka tulad ng medical uh, examination na pwede kang mag-upfront for biometric, kailangan dala mo na yung biometric instruction letter na nanggaling from IRCC bago ka magpa-schedule ng uh, biometric sa VFS. 
Now, step three, you have to go to an official biometric collection service point. So, sa Philippines, um, VFS ang kumukuha ng biometric uh, para sa Canada. Ano-ano yung mga kailangan mong dalen na documents kapag ka ready ka na to uh, do your biometric? So, first, you have to bring with you your passport your biometric instruction letter, and then your appointment confirmation letter, and also you have to provide the consent form, and yung consent form, madadownload nyo yan sa uh, VFS website. I, now, I will show you kung paano kayo makakapag-book ng appointment sa VFS. So, this is their website. All we need to do is click on Book Now. And then, there are actually different uh, ways for you to book your appointment. Pwede online, by phone, email, uh, chat, or in person. So, yung sa akin, uh, binook ko siya online. And, ayan, nandiyan na yung mga information na kailangan ninyong uh, gawin. So, you have to enter an email and then password and then mag email na lang ang VFS sa inyo ng appointment letter once it's confirmed. Now, for my final tip, tip number five, pray and let go. After ng biometric, there's really nothing that you can do at this point aside from wait. And during that waiting game, believe me, you will feel uh, stress, makakaramdam ka ng anxiety, and pagkakaroon ka ng mga doubts and questions sa, sa isip mo. But you have to let go. And you have to trust yourself that you did your best and let God do the rest. Believe and have faith na ibibigay yan sa iyo ni God on His perfect time. And while we are on our season of waiting, Step 6, sa background, si IRCC ay nagkoconduct na ng background check para sa uh, family namin. And they are also reviewing our eligibility. So once they are done uh, with the background checking and uh, determined that we are eligible, we finally received uh, an email saying that a final decision has been made and that our application was approved. Now, hindi pa dito nagtatapos yung buong process because... Step 8, you have to submit your passport for visa stamping. So, isasubmit mo yan kay VFS and si VFS naman ang magpapadala niyan sa Canadian Embassy para matatakan yung mga passports ninyo. Ano-ano ngayon yung mga kailangan ninyong isubmit sa VFS? First is, of course, you have to submit your passport and then yung letter of request for passport makukuha ninyo ito sa uh, inyong GCK account. Consent form, which you can download sa VFS website. And yung manager's check. So, sa manager's check, uh, kailangan uh, exact yung amount niyan, yung uh, processing fee, yung transmittal fee, because sa uh, case namin, yung dalawang bata, hindi sila nag-biometric and uh, hindi sila uh, required mag-biometric. So, therefore, we have to pay for a transmittal fee. Uh, and then, uh, we also paid for SMS, uh, which is 120 pesos, if I remember it right. Ito yung makaka-receive ka ng text message para i-update ka kung ano na yung nangyayari dun sa uh, passport mo. Now, you have to put it inside uh, a brown envelope. And sa labas ng envelope, you have to write your name, your address, email, and mobile number. Waiting na makabalik yung aming passport with visa. Nag-proceed naman ako sa aming step 9, which is applying for a travel authorization. Nung time namin, nililimit pa ni Canada yung mga tao na pinapayagang makapasok ng bansa. So, para mapayagan ka, you have to show na meron kang travel authorization. There are actually two ways for you to apply for a travel authorization. It's either through the email or through the web form. Now, either way, you have to write a letter of intent explaining why your presence is needed in Canada. And then along with that letter of intent, you have to provide the following documentation. First, you have to provide uh, the documents of the foreign worker to prove his or her status in Canada. So kami, pinasa ko yung work permit and yung visa ni Daddy Oyo. 
You also need to submit proof of relationship to the temporary foreign worker. So, I submitted yung mga uh, birth certificate naming lahat, yung marriage certificate namin ni Daddy Oyo, and yung baptismal certificate ng mga bata. On your letter, you also have to include the following details. Yung approval letter from the IRCC, yung unique client identifier, and this um, information can be found on your GCK account, your application number, your passport number, and your country of residence. Sa end ko, nag-request uh, ako ng travel authorization through email, and this is the email address uh, to where I send it to. After 14 days, June 14 of 2021, we received our travel authorization, and that's basically the end of this whole process. Yung mga sumunod na steps na yan ay yung uh, nag-book na kami ng ticket, we uh, booked our hotel, insurance, and um, shuttle. Yan na yung mga uh, preparation na ginawa namin prior to our departure. That's it guys! That's our whole application process. And totoo na kapag ka nag-DIY ka, it will take a lot of your time, effort, magkakaroon ka ng maraming frustrations. Pero I think it's all worth it at the end pagka nakuha mo na yung approval letter from the IRCC. So again guys, don't be discouraged to do it yourself. Makakatipid ka na at uh, mas matututukan mo pa yung application mo. Because again, kahit na meron kang consultant na kunin, maglalabas ka ng pera pero walang ibang magpapakita uh, ng concern sa application mo maliban sa sa'yo. So, kung kaya mo rin lang yan i-DIY, i-DIY mo na yan. Okay? If meron pa kayong tanong, you can post um, all your questions on the comment section. I will try to answer them. But again, please uh, do note that I can only answer based on my experience. Okay? Again, do your own diligence. Do your own research. Para rin naman yan sa application mo. So, good luck everyone to your application. And hopefully, magkita-kita tayo dito sa Canada soon. Again, thank you so much everyone for watching. If meron pa kayong mga uh, suggestion na gusto ninyong pag-usapan natin, just let me know sa comment section below. And I hope, we hope that you find this video um, informative and helpful para sa inyo. If you do, please give us a like and we will also appreciate if you can subscribe to our channel. And thank you again everyone. We'll see you again on our next vlog. Bye!